Welcome. You made it to Learning Target 3.2, which is all about microscope skills and field of view. Uh, in this Learning Target, you're actually going to be brushing up your skills on how to use a microscope and learning about this thing called field of view, which you may or may not remember based on what you did in the living environment last time. Uh, here we go. Let's get started. It's a pretty short Learning Target, but it is an important one, so that's why I separated it out here from others. Uh, just to review the microscope real quick, I'm not going to quiz you on every single piece of the microscope, but I do want to take you through the tour because you'll probably be using one in the coming weeks. All right, so just for safety, uh, these things are kind of expensive, so you just always want to carry one hand on the bottom here, put your hand underneath on the base, and then carry it for the arm like that, right? And then hold it close to your body just so you don't drop it. Uh, you always want to focus using the coarse knob followed by the fine adjustment. The light helps to see the specimen. This thing is called the diaphragm. It slides back and forth. Sometimes people look down through the uh, objective lens and like, oh, my eyeball hurts. Well, you can try sliding this to decrease the amount of light coming through the lens here. This thing over here that you put the slide on is called the stage. These stage clips keep the slides in place. Objective lenses just help you have high, medium, and low power. The nose piece is what they're attached to. This body tube is what you're looking down through. And the ocular lens also helps to magnify the specimens where you put your eye and look through. All right, so moving on. It's important for you to be able to know what magnification you're looking at under a microscope. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. But just to show you, this is the ocular lens. This is actually a lens that can be removed. It's a magnification of 10. And then over here on the nose piece are these different objective lenses. Uh, four times magnification, ten times magnification, and forty times lenses. To actually calculate your magnification, though, you take the ocular lens and the objective lens and you multiply them together. So ten times four is forty. And this is what a letter E looks like. It actually is inverted upside down when you put it right side up. And it's a whole other story. Um, so forty times, ten times ten, this is a hundred times. 10 times 40, this is 400 times. And obviously, as you increase the magnification, the image or appears, what you see is bigger. Uh, although, you can't see as much of it. Uh, the microscope here is called a light microscope, or a compound light microscope. However, there's other types of microscopes. This one, for instance, is called a scanning electron microscope. Instead of using light, it uses electrons to magnify the image. It comes up with these pretty cool images that you see here. Uh, really high powered. This is a worm. And these are pollen things that you actually um, may, might be allergic to. They come from flowers and trees and things like that. How about now we talk about some skills that you're going to need to be able to actually show me during your verbal quiz. Uh, the first one is going to be something called a wet mount preparation of a slide. And the other one is to be able to add substances to that slide that you prepare. I'm going to walk you through the steps for that in a second. Okay. So basically, when you have your slide, okay, you're going to place a drop of water on the slide. Then you're going to place your specimen onto that drop of water. And then you're going to take something called a cover slip, which is a square piece of glass. And you're going to gently just lower it down at a 45 degree angle. And the reason that you're lowering it down slowly is because you want to help prevent air bubbles when you're putting it underneath, actually, on the slide. If you see a lot of perfect round circles, that means your specimen has a lot of air bubbles in it, so you can really just go and just gently tap it down with a bathroom eraser. But you're going to have to do this yourself. If you want to practice uh, making a wet mount preparation, I will have slides and cover slips available to you. Um, but you, were gonna, you are going to have to do this during a verbal quiz, or at least explain to me that you know, or demonstrate to me through explanation that you know how to make a wet mount preparation. So make sure you know these different steps why we need to lower it down slowly. Okay, the other thing that you may need to do, especially during the New York State Lab that we're we'll doing later on this year, is you're going to be able to add various substances to a slide. Now sometimes you might want to add stain to be able to see the different organelles of a cell. And sometimes you might want to add something like a salt solution to the cell or distilled water. And you can actually do this without actually removing the stage or removing the slide from the stage. And as you can see here in this image, basically what you do is you take your pipette or your dropper, and on one side you place a small piece of paper towel, on the other side you place the solution in the dropper that you want to add to the slide. 
and you just kind of nuzzle up the pipette, as you see the student doing here, to the edge of the cover slip, holding the paper towel on the other side, and you squirt a couple drops of your substance onto the slide, and the paper towel, through something called capillary action, will actually suck some of that substance through, and that's how you add a substance to the slide, and something that you should be knowledgeable how to do, and be able to explain to me how to add a substance in your verbal quiz. Okay, next, feel the view. Now let's say you look down through a microscope. Imagine you're looking down through a microscope, and you see this image, right? The image that you're seeing, the diameter, I should say, of that image, or the size of the viewing area that you can see when you're looking through a microscope is called field of view. So from here to here is the field of view. Now in order to understand how to calculate or understand to read the field of view, you need to know how to use a ruler. And in science, we use the metric system. So this is centimeters, one centimeter, two centimeter, three centimeter, four centimeter, or these little dashes represent millimeters. Now one centimeter equals 10 millimeters. So one centimeter is 10 millimeters, 20 millimeters, 30 millimeters, 40 millimeters, 41, 42, 43, 44, and 45 millimeters is the largest object that you could actually measure with this particular ruler. So, test yourself. How long is this organism? Pause it, see if you can figure it out. Okay, did, I, did this picture trick you, right? Now you can notice here that this organism, which is called a planera, or a worm, or maybe a leech, right, it doesn't actually get started measuring at the zero. Why the person didn't start at zero, I'm not sure, but this is something that you'll see on the regions a lot, actually. A uh, question that'll come up like this, right? And a lot of people will go, oh, well, this thing right here, well, it looks like it's three and a half centimeters, or 35 millimeters and they'll choose that answer, when in fact they're wrong, because it doesn't go all the way to zero. This is the zero, right? There's a whole centimeter here that isn't missing. So if this is 35, and this is 10, 35 minus 10 is 25 millimeters, or one, two, and a half centimeters. Is that the answer that you came up with? Okay, so great. If not, here, try this one. How long is this organism? Use the centimeters. Okay, notice again, this doesn't start at zero. It doesn't go all the way to zero. It starts at one. So this can be your zero, right? So this is one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters, four centimeters, five centimeters, five and a half centimeters long. That's how long this thing is. It's not six and a half centimeters long because it doesn't go all the way to zero. It's five and a half centimeters, which is 55 millimeters, if you do that conversion, right? One centimeter equals 10 millimeters. Okay, now that you know how to use a ruler with millimeters and centimeters, we can now actually practice taking a field of view. Now, field of view is the diameter of what you're seeing when you look through a microscope, right? So you might see something that looks like this. The diameter can be this way. Be this way, or it could be this way, right? It has to be the whole length. However, if you took like a cross section like this, that's not the diameter. So that would be wrong. The diameter is the entire length from the farthest part of the edge of the circle to the other farthest part of the edge. The diameter of what you see is the field of view. Alright? As you increase the magnification of a specimen, so as you go from, from this example from 40 times magnification to 100 times magnification, the diameter of the field of view decreases. Let me say that again. As you increase magnification, the field of view decreases. Because you can't see as much of it. Here's some examples, right? Here's an eagle that's magnified seven times. Here's an eagle that's magnified ten times. When you magnify something, you can see better details, but you cannot see as much of the image because the field of view is reduced. You can't, you don't have as much of the image. You don't have as large of a diameter. 
cross. So here's two images. Which of these images is being viewed at a higher magnification? Well, which one looks closer? That's right. B. This is the higher magnification. Which of these images has a greater field of view? Well, which of these images can you see more of? A. Yeah. The diameter in this case would be larger because you can see more of it. It's a wider perspective. It's kind of a difficult concept, but keep in mind our rule, right? As you increase magnification, the field of view starts to shrink. So how is field of view measured? Well, you can actually take a ruler and place it underneath the microscope, and you'll see the little lines on a ruler, the millimeter marks, and that's one way you can actually measure the field of view. Sometimes millimeters are converted into micrometers. When you're using a microscope, things are really small. So one millimeter is a thousand micrometers. So how long are these cells? Well, this cell is one, two millimeters, or two thousand micrometers long. Why don't you guys practice a little bit? This is a magnification of 30. What is the field of view here? field of view is, depending on which kind of unit you're using, 0.5 centimeters, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 5 millimeters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 5,000 micrometers. Remember, 1 millimeter for 1,000 micrometers. I'm just putting them all here just so you can choose them. They're all actually the same. They all equal the same measurement just different units. Let's try another one. Going up in magnification now. Remember, as magnification increases, the field of view, the diameter that you can see, decreases. So what's the field of view here? Use the ruler. This is in millimeters. Okay, so probably the easiest way to count here is millimeters, right? One millimeter, two millimeters, three millimeters, and a little bit, three-tenths of a milliliter. So 3.3 .3 millimeters is the field of view, the diameter across, 4.33 centimeters, or 3,300 micrometers. Going up in magnification again. As magnification increases, the field of view, the amount that you can see, decreases. Again, in millimeters, what is the field of view here? One millimeter, two millimeters in a little bit, 2.1. If you're close, give yourself credit. 2.1 millimeters, or 0.21 centimeters, or 2,100 micrometers. So again, you see our rule here, right? As you go up in magnification, the amount that you can see, the field of view, starts to shrink. Okay. This one's a little tricky. Look at the look at the measurements here. Try this one. It's in millimeters, the these big lines, right? The darker lines are millimeters. The field of view here is one millimeter. Sorry. One millimeter. 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3 millimeters, or 0.31 centimeters, or 1,300 micrometers. Sorry, I think that cut off there. Okay, so here's a little review, right? As we increase magnification, the field of view shrunk, or what we could actually see underneath or through the microscope was smaller. Now let's apply what we know here to actually try to measure some cells. So you may see cells that look like this. These could very well be someone's cheek cells. What organelle do you think that is? It's the nucleus. These very well could be plant cells or onion cells. Okay? And it looks like I'm going to run out of time on my slide here. I only get 15 minutes with this particular application. So I'm going to pick this up in the next video where we'll measure some slides together.